Hello, this is Eric Reine from Webster University coming to you again with another marketing analytics procedure. In today's video, we're going to be discussing bundle pricing. So to begin with, we're going to look at an example of a cable company that offers three different channels. One is a sports channel, one is a movie channel, and one is a news channel. We have three people have different reservation prices. What a reservation price is, is the amount a customer is willing to pay or the value that they see in, a ver in various offerings. So in this particular case, for person one, their reservation price or the value that they see in sports channels is $10. In other words, they're willing to pay $10 for the sports channel. And if you compare that to the movie and news channel, you can see that they're, they value sports more than they do movies and news. However, they are willing to pay for movies at $5 and news at $2. For the second person, we see that it looks like their value um, is higher in terms of movie channels because a reservation price is $8 for the movie channel in comparison to the other two. If we look at the third person, it looks like they don't like sports at all. They're not willing to pay anything for sports with the reservation price of $0. However, movies, $11, seems to be what they're willing to pay the most for in comparison to news. So the question is, how should we price things similar to this situation of this cable company where we have these different people who value things differently in terms of the different offerings we have. So should we set a price low and capture as many customers as we possibly can? So we, should we set it in the middle and try to capture, you know, a swath of the entire population? Or maybe set it high and try to capture as much revenue as possible? Um, these are the dilemmas that we face when we have multiple offerings and we have individuals that seem to what we can consider price or, or valuing them at almost negative correlations. In other words, they see value, a high value in one offering that we have, but a low value in another offering. So going back to this example, what should we do? Should we set it at, you know, the lowest price possible for the sports channel, the highest possible price? I would suggest that you pause the video right here, take a minute, kind of work this through and see what you come up with. Okay, so hopefully you've kind of worked through the problems and we're going to start with the high price. And you can see if we were to price these at the highest price, for the sports channel, the first person is kind of setting our highest price at $10. So we would price this one at $10. And thus, we would only capture one person. There's only one person, person number one, that's willing to pay $10 for the sports channel. So we would get them as a customer, and thus we would have $10 there. For the second one, only the third person is willing to pay $11, and that's where we're setting the price because that's the highest price possible. And thus, we would uh, capture the third person. And for the news channel, we would set the price at $6 and again, capture the third person. So if we were to calculate the revenue for each one of these, we would, sit, we would see we would get $10 for the sports channel, $11 for the movie channel, and $6 for the news channel. Giving, a, giving us a total revenue of $27. Now let's compare that to if we were to do the lowest price. Setting the lowest price for the sports channel, we would see that we would set it at $4. We wouldn't set it at $0 because we're not gonna capture any kind of revenue. The third person, doesn't see any value in the sports channel, so we're not capturing any value by setting the price at zero. They're not even going to watch it even if we did set it at zero, so it would be nonsense to set it at zero. All right, so for the second person, 
they value sports at $4. So we would set the price at $4, thus capturing both person one and person two. However, you see that by capturing person one, they're willing to pay $4 because they're willing to pay up to $10. But we're leaving $6 on the table. In other words, we're providing this person one really with a surplus of value of $6. And as a result, we're losing the potential of gaining $6 here. But if we were to, in the first example, set the price high and capture that $6, well, we wouldn't get the second person here at $4. So we're trying to capture both. We set it at $4. Thus, we would have a revenue of $8 for capturing $4 for each one of them. Again, for the second one, the lowest price for the movie channel is $5. And so we would capture everyone uh, but we would lose money on the second person of three dollars and we would lose six dollars on the third person but we would capture all three customers five dollars a piece that would give us fifteen dollars for the movie channel same thing with the news channel if we set the price at two dollars we capture all three we are losing some money we are providing surplus value for person one and person, or I'm sorry, person two and person three. Uh, but if we set the price at $2, capture all three, we would actually gain revenue for the news channel at $6. If you add this up, then you come to a total revenue of $29. Uh, so this is $2 more than when we set it at the high price of $27. So we're actually getting a little bit more money in this situation. You can see if you multiply this times millions of customers, how $2 could really add up to a, a lot of money, significant amount of money. Okay, so now let's compare the high price, the low price to setting a middle price. So setting the middle price, we would find the middle price for the, the people and set that as our goal price and see what value or what revenue is captured. So in the first circumstance with the sports channel, again, we would set it at four. It is in the middle. Um, you know, we don't really, we can disregard this zero in terms of setting a price, but it does help us establish the low point for the price. Uh, so, and again, in this case, it's $4. We capture the first two for $8. The second one, we would set it at $8. That's our middle price. We would not capture person one because they're not willing to pay $8 for the movie channel. Thus, we would only capture person two and person three, but we're capturing a little bit more money off of person two and person three in comparison to setting the low price. So now we're only leaving in excess of, of um, $3 on the table for person three instead of $6 if we did it at $5, if we set the price at $5. All right, so setting the price at $8, we capture the second two. That gives us a total revenue for the movie channel of $16. We set the price for the news channel at $5, thus capturing again person two and person three at $5 a piece, giving us a total revenue for the news channel of $10. And we can see in this circumstance that the total revenue is $34. In fact, we are capturing, it seems to be, more revenue by setting a mid price point. If you remember, setting it at a high price point, it was $27 of total revenue captured. When we set it at a low price point, it was $29. And now it's $34. So we're actually capturing five more dollars. But is this the best approach to setting price in order for us to capture or re, 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 uh, uh, to um, gain or to capture what I'm considering reciprocal value, the value that we get in return for offering value to these customers. And ultimately, that's what we want to do. Now, this is not bundle pricing. This is pure component pricing where we are pricing each one of these channels separately. We're 
pricing the sports channel at four dollars we're pricing the movie channel at eight dollars and we're pricing the news channel at five dollars but what would happen if we were to bundle these and price them together as one package deal all right so we have our sports channel our movie channel and our news channel and in this case we're just going to do a simple pure bundle where we're only going to have one offering and that offering is going to be all three of these together so what would be our bundle reservation price now if you remember unless you have indication otherwise set the bundle reservation price at that sum price for all of the offerings for that person's reservation price for each one of those so if you look at the first person ten dollars plus five dollars plus two dollars means they have a bundle reservation price of seventeen dollars and if you look at this example you'll see that actually each person has a reservation price of seventeen dollars all right this is not always going to be the case I just set this example up this way to make it easy for you to understand. But in most circumstances, you will have even bundled, identified bundles and reservation prices of those identified bundles. Um, they're going to be different for each person. Okay? But we do see that if we were to set $17 as our bundle price and sell these as just a pure bundle where you have to buy all three, then the first person is willing to pay $17 for all three because he gets his news channel at his price, he gets his movie channel at his price, and he gets his sports channel at his price. Again, the second person is going to be realizing the full value of their reservation price. So... $17, they get their sports channel, their movie channel, and their news channel. And if we look at the third person, if you remember the third person, she didn't want the sports channel. I'm saying she, it could have been a he, right? Um, but they didn't want the, this person didn't want the sports channel. But regardless, they're willing to pay $17 for the movie channel and news channel. The sports channel is just thrown in. And if uh, this person never looks at the sports channel, so be it, they still have that channel, okay? So in this case, we have captured all three people and we fully captured the value that they find in the products that they want. So 17 times three gives us a total revenue of $51. And if you compare that to what we had in terms of the middle pricing, $34, or even the higher low price, which was under $30, you could see that there is a significant amount of revenue that's captured with the bundle pricing versus that of the other. Again, my name is Eric Reine from Webster University. You can contact me at my email information. You can also contact me on Twitter or LinkedIn, and certainly you can find me on YouTube. Join me for another one of my marketing analytics videos. There are more to come. And if you like this one, hit the like button, and you can also join my page. Take care, and I'll see you soon.